state capture protest and anti-corruption march. The Labour Federation and the SACP have been calling on President Jacob Zuma to step down. Kasatu and the SACP, who are members of the ANC's tripartite alliance, have thrown their support behind Deputy President Cyril Ramaphosa ahead of the December elective conference. And some analysts have questioned the motive for today's nationwide strike. Now for an analysis of the Kusato strike action, we are joined from our Pretoria studios uh, by Professor Somododo Fekeni, uh, a political analyst. Uh, welcome back, Prof. Thank you for joining us again this hour. Today is yet another example of the widening chasms uh, we're seeing between Kusato and the ANC. Can these roofs be mended within the lines at this point? It is unlikely that this rift is going to be amended within the alliance because ANC is equally divided and the factions have the balance of power on both ends. So whilst one section may want to reach out and deal with the real issues, the other uh, faction might actually take a point that uh, COSATU and SACP has already taken a stand against a faction they support and also the fact that the accusation of state capture may point fingers to some of those who happen to be in the other faction so it becomes an existential crisis. So the rift cannot be resolved within the short foreseeable future. Mm. Uh uh, Prof, uh, unions like NUMSA, we heard Irvin Jim earlier uh, saying this march is disingenuous uh, as it doesn't really tackle the real issue of white monopoly capitalism, he calls it. Uh, do they have a point? I mean, we heard Kasato President uh, Stumud Lamini uh, saying earlier that the march has nothing to do with factional battles or politics, but it's rather about labor brokers and corruption. Uh, but we did see workers singing anti-Zuma songs and holding up anti-Zuma posters what do you make of it also remember the fact that uh, you may not have a similar message from all sections of COSATU COSATU itself has been quite divided over the question of how to tackle President Jacob Zuma and how to relate to the ANC itself including the support for Cyril Ramaphosa whilst on the surface it may look like there is unanimity. Some of the subtle messages do suggest that some are not wholeheartedly for those positions, but the affiliates have forced them into that particular position. So to that extent, I do think that uh, we must not take the message by the president of Kosatu per se and interpret it to mean that everyone of the affiliates or even the leadership within COSATU were of the same mind. But again, it would just have been a wishful thinking to think that such a political field would not be used to endorse and to amplify the positions that COSATU and SACP have formally taken. Uh, Prof, I just want to quickly talk about the impact of such a march or protest action like we saw today uh, on the public consciousness, especially as, uh, as we head uh, to the crucial ANC December elective conference. Uh, will such actions serve to uh, unify or polarize South Africans uh, in the next few months? Well, let me put it this way. South Africans generally resent and are aggrieved by the corruption element which has become so pervasive in the society. So there is nothing that will polarize them because any march, whether it was the one by the civil society organizations or COSATU, where they think it may help to put more pressure and put spotlight on the issue of corruption and the state capture, there is a greater degree of unanimity in that. The only rift will come within the ANC itself, or it may also come within the labor movement because COSATU had not participated in the earlier matches where other unions participated. And also COSATU had a fallout with parties like, uh, I mean, with the unions like NUMSA, 
and uh, the new federation that now uh, Mr. Vavi and the collective of those who were pushed out of Kosatu are leading. So the controversy as to the bona fides of this march will, raise at, will rise at that level, but not on the march against corruption. All right, so we saw a largely peaceful, incident-free protest action today, Prof, uh, where we see South Africans exercising their right to protest, but well within the bounds of the law. Uh, a sign of a maturing democracy, do you think? Well, it's something of a mixed uh, experience. In some instances, you do have the right to march being used, but we should understand that of late, the levels of frustration and the new political culture of a violent rhetoric of disruption, sometimes damage to property and attack to other people, has become a common feature. But so far, this seem to have been a lot more disciplined, uh, according to the reports. And that is not common, though, because from time to time you do have violent confrontations when marches are actually legally permissible. Professor Fakeni Somododa joining us there from our Pretoria studios. Thank you so much for sharing your insights with us, Prof, on the SABC News Desk this hour.